We're going to continue uh, with chapter 27, covering section 6, which talks, uh, talks about finding the potential um, for a single loop circuit. All right, so the potential between two points in a single loop circuit. Um, one thing we need to realize is that the internal resistance of our EMF device, whether it's a battery or not, um, reduces the potential difference between these two terminals. So here's our two terminals, A and B. One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. And we know this internal resistance is going to reduce that. So we want to see what the effect of um, this, resist this internal resistance is. All right, so if we start at... Uh, if we go clockwise, starting from point A, and we go to point B, we can see what our voltage drop is going to be. All right, so when we do that, we know we can say that our voltage at A is just going to be some VA, and then we run into our EMF, which is going to be epsilon. That's going to be positive because you're going with the current, so it'll be positive. Then we run into a resistor. We know that's going to be negative since we're going with the current, so that's going to be minus, oops, minus i little r for our internal resistance and then we get to our final position which is b so that's just going to be our final voltage okay. rearranging uh, we have vb minus va so this is our change in potential is equal to our emf minus our internal resistance times the current okay now we also know that our current is just going to be the EMF divided by big R plus R. We saw we have that result from earlier. So we use this and plug it in for our current here. So our change in potential is then going to be our EMF minus EMF divided by R plus R times R. That's just going to simplify to our EMF R plus R times big R. Okay. All right, so plugging in numbers, our change in potential is going to be our volt or our EMF, which is given as 12 volts, divided by our two resistances. So we have 4 ohms as our big R added to 2 ohms which is our internal resistance, and this is multiplied by 4 ohms, or big R. It's equal to 8.0 volts. So we can, see, we can see that the actual output from the battery is only going to be 8 volts, and that's because of the internal resistance. Um, so let's see what happens if we go counterclockwise from A. So if we go around this way, we're going against the current, and then we end up at B. I want to see what the voltage drop there is. All right, so we start with some VA, same as before. Now we're going to add IR, right, because we're going against the current, so we're going to add uh, um, the resistance <clears throat> times the uh, current, and then that's just going to be equal to our final voltage, which is VB. So again, rearranging, we have VB minus VA is equal to IR. Solving for I, we have I, or sorry, from the, uh, using the I that we found earlier for a single loop circuit, it's going to be uh, epsilon R plus R. So plugging that in, we end up getting VB minus VA is just 8.0 volts again. So we can see no matter which way we go around the circuit, we get the same voltage um, difference uh, between the same two points. All right, so to, to find the potential between any two points in a circuit, start at one point and then traverse the circuit to the other point following any path, and then out, add algebraically uh, the changes in potential you encounter. Okay, so again, we could either go this way or we could have went this way. As long as we start and end at the same point, we'll get the same voltage. Okay, um, so the potential cross row battery. So if the internal resistance, little r, of the battery in the previous case were zero, right? So if you didn't have any internal resistance, um, v, v would be equal to the EMF of the battery, namely 12 volts. However, since r is two, two ohms, uh, V is going to be less than the EMF. 
right? So the EMF is the driving force, and the voltage across the battery is the is the real voltage, what it's actually going to be producing. All right, the uh, the result depends on the value of the current through the battery. So if the same battery were in a different circuit and had a different current through it, um, V would be some other value, right? So the 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 value of the voltage that's actually outputted by the battery depends on the current of, of the circuit. Um, the internal resistance reduces the potential difference between the terminals, just to reiterate. All right, grounding a circuit. So this is the same examples we've used in the previous slide, except that the battery uh, terminal A is grounded, right? So this is going to be our symbol for grounding. It's just going to be a line coming out and then sort of tapering off lines coming out of it. Um, grounding a, cir a circuit usually means that connecting the circuit to a conducting path to the Earth's surface. And such a connection means that the potential is defined to be zero at the grounding point in the circuit. All right, so before we were just sort of talking where we're referencing, well, the change of potential and not saying what the actual potential was. But if we ground something, the, um, the point close or the terminal close to that ground, we can call that to be zero. All right, so the potential at A is defined to be VA is equal to zero. Therefore, the potential at B is just going to be 8 volts because we know that the change of potential is going to be 8 volts through the battery. Okay. All right, so power potential and EMF. The net rate of power, of, of energy transfer from an EMF device to charge carriers is given by P is equal to IV. And we've seen this equation before. We've seen it in other forms, uh, which include resistances and such. Um, but where V is the potential across the terminals of the EMF device. But um, our, our voltage, our potential, is equal to EMF minus IR. Right? We've seen that. Um, therefore, the actual power output is going to be I times V, which is epsilon naught minus IR. Simplifying that, you get two terms. You have this term and this term. So PR, or P sub R, is going to be the rate of energy transfer to thermal energy within the EMF device. And we can call that as such. So this term here is going to be what's being lost to thermal energy because of the resistance inside of our EMF device. And we're going to call that the internal dissipation rate. Therefore, this other term, just I uh, epsilon, must be the rate P EMF, at which the EMF transfer uh, device transfers energy both to the charge carriers and to the internal thermal energy. So basically, you start out with so much power, and you're losing some of it to this internal resistance. All right, so this we just call our P EMF um, I epsilon. All right, so let's go ahead and do an example. Um, we have a circuit here. A couple things to point out. We have two batteries now in the circuit. And we should also note that the EMFs are going to be working against each other. You have one going this way, going clockwise around the circuit, and you have one pointing the other way, going opposite around the circuit. All right, so basically you just flip, flip the battery so you have positive and positive facing each other. Oops. Right, and you have negative and negative facing each other. Generally, we wouldn't want to do this because you're not you're going to you're going to be losing some efficiency here. Um, but that's that's how they have it set up. All right, so we want to find what the potential difference um, is between the, the. Oops, excuse me. Sorry. There we go. Um, we want to find first what the current is. All right, so we want to find the current in. The, the circuit. Oops. Okay. Again, these are our positives, these are our negatives. All right, so although knowing the direction of the current is not necessary, we can easily determine it from the EMFs of the two batteries. Now, because your EMF at 1 is greater, it's at 4.4, and EMF at 2 is only 2.1, the 4.4 EMF is going to overcome the, the 2.1 EMF. All right, so we know that the current is going to be in a clockwise uh, direction, right, following the direction of E1. Now, these decisions about where to start and which way you go are arbitrary, but once you make a decision, you need to be consistent um, about the plus and minus signs. All right, so let us then apply the loop rule by going counterclockwise against the current, and starting at point A. 
All right, so we're going to start here at point A. We're going to go against the current in this direction. All right, so we then find, <clears throat> we first come to E1, so that's going to be negative E1. Okay, again, we're going against it, so we're going to subtract the, um, excuse me, I keep saying E, but I meant epsilon. We're going to subtract the epsilon. All right, so we have negative epsilon 1. We get to the internal resistance, so we add that, which is going to be I R1. Then we get to our big resistor here that's in the circuit. So this is going to be plus I big R. Then we get to our second battery, the little resistor, so that's going to be plus I R2. And then we get finally to our uh, last EMF device, and we're going in the same direction, so we're going to add this one. Alright, so epsilon 2. All right, and that's going to be equal to zero because we get back to our original point. All right, so we also want to we want to check that this equation also results if we apply the loop rule clockwise instead of counterclockwise. All right, so if I wanted to go clockwise starting from A, I would get to this first one and it's going to end up being negative, right? Because it's going against us, so that would be negative. Resistor is going to be negative. Uh, that'll be negative. That'll be negative, and this will be positive, right? So this is uh, really just going to get us the opposite of what we just found, multiply through by negative 1, and it's the same result. We can do that because it's equal to 0 on the other side, so that doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so also take the time to compare this equation term by term with the figure, which shows the potential changes graphically, with the potential at point A arbitrarily taken to be 0. All right, so if we start here, and then we're going... Uh, again, we're going counterclockwise, so we go, we hit R1, we lose a little bit of potential here. Then we go, or I should say add, because we're getting more positive. All right, then we get to the next resistor, get IR. Then we get to the internal resistance, and we get IR2, right? And then we get the last EMF, right? And then we're back down to zero. So that all looks good. All right, so solving the above loop equation for I, right, because we're, again, we want to find what the current is. This is pretty simple. You have a bunch of terms that have I in them, so you put them together, put these other terms on the other side, and then pull out I, and you have a bunch of things added together. All right, so what this looks like is I is equal to epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 divided by R plus R1 plus R2. Right, plugging in our values, we have 4. Point, oops, 4.4 volts minus 2.1 volts divided by 5.5 ohms plus 2.3 ohms, this is the internal resistors, uh, plus 1.8 ohms. Right? And this is equal to about 0 0.2396 amps or roughly 240 milliamps. Okay, so that's going to be our current. All right, finishing up the, this example, um, let me get rid of all of my annotations here. All right, the next uh, case we want to, what is the potential difference between the terminals of, of the battery? So I want to know what the potential between here and here is. And actually we have some um, points that we can use. We can use this point here and this point here because um, there's nothing going on in between these points and the battery. Okay, so we need to sum the potential differences between points A and B. Um, let us start at point B and effective effectively the negative terminal of the battery, right, because this is going to be, this is the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal, uh, and travel clockwise through the battery to point A, which is effectively the positive terminal, keeping track of potential changes. Okay, so we find that we have, we're starting with some voltage VB minus IR1 as we go through the uh, resistor, plus epsilon not 1, because we're going with the EMF in this case, so that'll be positive. And that is going to equal whatever our final voltage is here at the end. Okay, so VA, just rearranging, VA minus VB, and we switch that around just for sign convenience, 
plus epsilon, oops, which is equal to negative 0 0.2396 amps times 2.3 ohms plus 4.4, uh, oops, volts, sorry. And our change of potential is going to be 3.8 volts, okay. which is less than the EMF of the battery, right? The EMF of the battery uh, was 4.4 volts. Now, you can verify this result by starting at point B uh, and transversing the circuit counterclockwise. So if I started here and I went all the way around here, I would get the same result. So we learned two points. The potential difference between two points in a circuit is independent of the path we choose to go from um, one to the other. Then the current in the battery is in the prop oh sorry, when the current in the battery is in the proper direction, the terminal to terminal potential difference is low. Okay, that's it for this uh, lecture. We will pick it up next time.